all the way back in November of 2021 came the release of the 5.15 Linux kernel, and with that release came a massive new feature, full support for NTFS. This is the file system commonly used over on Windows. Now, for regular Linux users, this might not be, you know, that big of a deal, but if you happen to have a dual booted system, or maybe you're using a server that has a Windows section and a Linux section, anything like that, Having support for those NTFS drives is a massive improvement. This project was created by developers at Paragon Software with some level of partnership with Microsoft. Now, they didn't have much experience working with the kernel, but people still had fairly high hopes for this project. And all seemed well, at least for a short while. It does basically what it needs to do, but a little while later, people started to notice a problem. One person in particular being Carrie Agrilander, one of the existing attributors on the kernel. What he noticed is that no work had actually been submitted past the initial release. And he checked the GitHub, which is where the work was actually being mainly done, and nothing had been submitted since November of last year. So a couple of days after it got merged into the kernel, which was quite concerning because back when this was first submitted, the developer from Paragon said that they would be maintaining this implementation, so everybody just accepted that that was what was going to happen. And it's not like this implementation was already perfect and nothing needed to be done. People actually using it have said that sometimes folders disappear, sometimes it locks up, sometimes it just corrupts your data, so clearly work still needed to be done. And because of this absolute mess, Carrie went and sent out this email to the mailing list. NTFS3 driver is orphan already, what do we do? Just to basically find out what the plan was to do from here. Are we going to have someone else maintain it? Are we going to get rid of it? What do we do? And up until maybe a day ago, the original dev didn't reply, but now he has, and I'll show you that reply a bit later in the video. Now, this project has been kind of a mess from the start. So the dev representing Paragon is a guy known as Konstantin Komarov. And when I say that he's not really familiar with the way the kernel works, he doesn't understand the way the mailing list should be structured. His line links just don't make any sense here. If we go further down to one of his replies, the email lines in here are just way, way too long. Like, what is this? This does not fit at all with the way the kernel mailing list should be structured. But way worse than that is the patching style. One of those is not signing the commits. Second problem is 27,000 lines in a single commit. One patch. One patch was 27,000 lines. And this reply summed up basically everyone's thoughts at the time. How exactly do you expect someone to review this monstrosity? But with further discussion, it did get split out into multiple commits and ultimately got merged into the kernel. Not before Linus going on a massive rant about how GitHub adds in a bunch of extra useless junk when you're merging branches together, but that's a story for another time. Now in Carrie's email here, he basically says he was very willing to help this new maintainer. He wanted this feature to work and was willing to actually help out maintaining it himself. And he knows that when someone is a new maintainer on the kernel, especially when they're taking on a fairly large project, it's going to take some time to sort of get used to the kernel workflow, get used to how everything functions, and that's totally fine. But even when directly saying things that needed to be changed, he didn't always go and fix them. So I did also ask to use the fix and next branches separately and tag stable fixes, but it did not do that either. I think Constantine did not quite understand the meaning of stable, next, and upstream, and it is not okay to apply every patch to the same tree at any point. But that was when he could actually get in contact with him. As he says here, he mostly ignored my emails. And for that very short period where patches were being applied, he'd not suggest anything to anyone if someone sent a patch. He just applied those or ignored. Also, sometimes he just applied his own patch without sending it to the review process. It even got to the point where Carrie could clearly see this guy was struggling and suggested he could co-maintain this driver and take some of the burden away from Constantine. But at least at that point, he never got a reply. 
This sat here for a day and it started to make its way around Reddit and other places on the internet. And then the man himself, Linus Torvalds, chimed in with a response. A fairly short response, but a response nonetheless. If you're willing to maintain it and maybe find other like-minded people to help you, I think that would certainly be a thing to try. And if we can find nobody that ends up caring and maintaining, then I guess we should remove it. Rather than end up with two effectively unmaintained copies of NTFS drivers. Not that two unmaintained file systems are much worse than one. There were some other people who chimed in, like NumJGeon, which I probably butchered really badly, saying that they were willing to help out Carrie with maintaining this project, even saying they were already working on some stuff related to NTFS anyway. But until a couple of days ago, this was basically the end of the story. And then Constantine finally responded, and the response is absolutely incredible. First and foremost, I need to state that active work on NTFS 3 driver has never stopped, and it was never decided to orphan NTFS 3. Now, a project can be orphaned in two ways. First way is the developer decides, hey, I don't want to work on this anymore. It can just exist in the world and someone else can deal with it. Second way is the dev disappears off the face of the planet and everyone decides the project has been orphaned. But let's see what his reason is for no work being committed for months. Currently, we are still in the middle of the process of getting the kernel.org account. We need to sign our PGP key to move forward, but the process is not so clear. We'll be grateful to get some process description, so it is going quite slow trying to unravel the topic. Now, the last commit was November 2021. Right now, it is May of 2022. You wouldn't think that sometime in that six-month gap, you would ask, how do I do this? Nothing. Radio silence. You get called out, and then you ask for help. Honest question, I'm not trying to be mean to the dev. Who waits that long to ask for help? In my case, maybe a couple of days, maybe a week at the absolute worst. Not six months. That's absolutely insane. But the response gets weirder. As for now, we can prepare patches slash pull requests with the GitHub and submit them right now. We have quite a bunch of fixes and new kernel support, bug fixes, and FS test fixes if Linus approves this approach until we get the proper git.kernel.org repo. So what you're saying is you've done all this work, but it exists locally. It's not in the GitHub you are already using. It's just on your local systems, or it's in, like, some internal repo that you're using. What are you even saying? That doesn't make any sense. Overall, nevertheless, the NTFS3 development pace has been slowed down a bit for previous couple of months. Its state is still the same as before. It is fully maintained and being developed. You don't have support for some of the kernels. What do you mean it's fully maintained? It's not fully maintained until that code is in the kernel. And then the reason that everybody uses over the past couple of years, you've got to have a COVID reason. I allowed myself a short vacation because most restrictions were lifted in Germany. And you know what? That's totally fair. I don't know when the vacation started. Was it like in November? Or was it a more recent vacation? Because if it started in November, that's certainly not a short vacation. I would like a short six-month vacation. That would be pretty nice. And Kara responded saying, Hey, welcome back. Glad to see you're still willing to be involved. And most importantly, I have to disagree that it's fully maintained right now. Half of your radio silence is not fully maintained. Which is basically the same thing that I said. What makes all of this hilarious is this is not the first attempt for NTFS support on Linux. It's actually the third. So the first attempt was a driver called the Captive NTFS driver. This was from years ago, last updated in 2006. This also made use of the original Windows NTFS.sys driver, which puts you in a really weird legal gray area, including proprietary Microsoft drivers in the kernel. For good reason, people wanted to move past that. And then prior to the Paragon driver, it was done through NTFS 3G, and this is actually still being used today. This is basically NTFS support done in user space through the Fuse system. The problem with Fuse, though, and the problem with NTFS 3G is it's made to be stable. It's not made to be fast. 
And if you can have both of those with a kernel driver, everybody is going to want to move to that instead. That was the whole purpose of going with this new driver. While most Linux users won't use NTFS in their day-to-day -day workflows, having that feature there isn't a bad thing. Isn't a bad thing if somebody is maintaining it. And that's sort of the whole problem here. If I was Linus, honestly, because of how much messing around this guy has done, I probably just want to kick him out of the project and find someone else to maintain it. But modern Linus isn't like that. Modern Linus is a little bit nicer. But we'll have to see what his response is if he ever actually does respond. I'll leave the full email exchange linked in the description down below. It is an absolutely incredible read. So let me know what you guys think. What do you think should be done here? Do you think this guy should be allowed to maintain this project? Give him another chance. Or do you think they should just go and find someone else? There's clearly people already in this thread who want to take it over. I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, it's only bearable pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech of a Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me and I'm out.